Hello Tubesters, it's Gav. Welcome to another one of my videos. Today is the latest stage, uh, thank you Archie, uh, he appears quite often in this video. Uh, this is the latest stage of my painting my Voltageur figure uh, from Avonpost. It was actually a light infantry figure that I'm painting uh, as a Voltageur. I've mentioned it in the video, but as this one's being back to front and I'm doing the intro now, I just thought I'd say again, uh, if you're after that particular figure, go look in the light infantry section. Uh, I just have to be painting them as a voltage. Enough said. Uh, right, uh, we've got the backpack uh, done today, uh, the the cover uh, over the uh, jacket or whatever it is. <laughs> you've got covered up and uh, the musket uh, no slings uh, no tapes uh, the white you know the white tapes on the strap strapping on the on the backpacks done uh, because I tend to do that all in one go so uh, yeah it is just uh, backpack musket uh, no white work so hope you enjoyed the video uh, thanks for for uh, stopping my taking taking a look at them I've just said on the wrap up of the the, finish, the painting I've just finished uh, it's unfortunate I, I just don't know another way of speeding it up at the moment uh, as I've said to you guys to do a sit down you know like a Serestro or a Plasmo or, or, or anybody like that and do solid editing for a day or two I can't do one or two days editing so it really is just a case of fling the videos together and if you get something out of them great so look after yourselves. I've already said this on the video, <laughs> in the end of the video. So look after yourselves and uh, we'll catch each other on the next instalment of this Voltage uh, which will be the black leather work of, as in the cartridge pouch, the uh, Shaco, things like that. And uh, other videos coming up. What have you got, Gav? Uh, almost, almost finished the uh, the four mounted figures I've got for Mezzes Minis in the, on the 30, 30 year war range. Uh, I'm, I've almost finished the mounted ones of those. Uh, I'm sticking the colours on the 18mm AB chasseurs for my client tomorrow. That's the flags. Uh, so uh, there'll be four battalions, say, of those to, to have a look at. I'm working on the Grenadiers at the moment. Uh, so they will be coming up yeah, towards the end of the week. Uh, the end of the week, Nick is going to be <laughs> probably Christmas Day. Oh well, I've got no life. Uh, <laughs> probably stick them up on Christmas Day. Uh, um, oh, the tank. The tank's had a fair bit of progress done to her as well. That's the one in 35 scale Sherman. Uh, that'll be a video coming up this week, probably. Probably. <laughs> uh, and uh, have I got any unboxings? There was an unboxing in some description. I just can't remember it right now. Look after yourselves. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, we'll catch each other again soon. Hello, Tubesters. Uh, thanks for joining me at the bench. I've made a start on the the backpack as you can see uh, one base coat and I have put a bit of the strong tone uh, wash stroke ink uh, into the uh, into the deep recesses uh, sometimes I do sometimes I don't it depends how well defined the uh, the cow skin is for <laughs> hair I'm not exactly sure <laughs> to describe it as but uh, in this case I wanted to use uh, the base colour is German pale brown uh, camo. Uh, I believe that's a serial number. And uh, the it's had a dab of orange brown. One against the favourite Vallejo colours. Now I'm going to put some white patches on this. Sometimes I hear that uh, backpacks, uh, French Napoleonic backpacks, didn't have the white on them. Uh, our really personal opinion is, and again, I'm not a Napoleonic expert or buff even. Uh, it just comes down to you would have thought common sense that French army lived off the land, so more or less, it was it would commandeer one pre-made stuff, but two. You know, if, if if they needed backpacks and they were in, say, the Netherlands or Spain, uh, they'd get a local manufacturer to do them. Now, I don't think they were that picky of getting all brown cows, you know, so uh, I, I like to show a bit of difference. Uh, I go a bit artistic in the sense of if there were lots of white straps going down here, 
rather than just these ones holding the, the flap down. I wouldn't do it only because there's so much white then everything merges into each other. Uh, but because this is quite, uh, you know, there's a quite a bit of surface area brown there, I'm, I'm going to do it and I'm going to use the old warm colours of, in fact I might have had have some on my palette from last night uh, doing the ABs. Uh, but you know you do either your dark sand and then pale sand or a mixture of both if you want to cut corners and then do a lighter one like ivory or something on the top. Uh, this will be a cover uh, and it's going to be in blue and white or white with blue stripes on and then uh, I don't do any of the, the white uh, strapping and, and anything like that until I've, I've covered all the bases so we're going to do this backpack next or well carry on doing the backpack and then we'll do the, the musket uh, and then we'll go on to, if I, I, whether I've got time or not I don't know, but then we'll go on to whether it's this video or another video, we'll do the the shako and, and all the black leather uh, pieces and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I just want to erase a thing, uh, somebody put uh, a comment on that this was a light infantry figure, not a voltage figure. Uh, the figure is bought from uh, Mezzes Minis uh, and obviously it's an Avon Post figure and it is in their light infantry range. I just made a decision to paint him as a Voltageur because I wanted to paint him as a Voltageur. So if you're after this particular figure uh, go in their light infantry range and he'll be there rather than under their Voltageurs. Um, I just wanted to paint him as a Voltageur. Uh, so I hope we've cleared that one up. I did mention it in oh, I think the first video, second, I don't know, but just in case uh, any you know anybody's thinking, well, I can't find the figure. I don't mean just the guys that tell me it's the wrong figure, but that, you know, if you if you're actually looking for this figure, go look for it. Uh, the Avon Post do him as a light infantry figure. As I say, I'm just painting him as a voltageur. I can't see anything on here particularly that's screaming out that uh, that I can't paint him as a voltageur. Uh, but I'm not a Napoleonic buff, uh, I just paint figures, but uh, yeah, uh, I can't particularly see anything there that would uh, scream out that I can't paint him as a Voltageur. So let's crack on. So uh, coming up next, uh, and I also got to paint the the uh, tape, as I call it, around the, the actual, let's use this, around the backpack, this tape. I tend to pick it out in a different colour again just to show some difference uh, so it'll be a you can paint them as white tapes uh, I usually tend to do them as brown uh, but I just pick a different brown color out to do them just to, to as I say to show a difference alright guys uh, I've got the backpack obviously apart from the white straps done thank you Archie that's my my pop in the background uh, right I the the white what that's it Gav show first right the white patches I mean obviously you the cowhide you put where you you want to uh, they were done with a mixture of 50 50 50 50 dark sand and pale sand again my Vallejo go to colours for that uh, type of thing any warm type of whites uh, and then a little dab here and there of ivory. As you can see, this is a well worn bottle. Uh, and then the tape, as I call it, so again, the stitching more or less that goes round, come on, focus, around the outside. I put a bit of US field drab, doesn't particularly show up. I'll often do the, the backpack slightly darker than this. Uh, and then I also just went round the edges. Uh, I did black line under the flap of the the backpack um, you could go better with maybe a bit of dark brown uh, or black brown uh, just to make a bit of relief there just show it up slightly um, did a bit underneath the the roll here but that's going to be painted so it might need to be redone just again show some shadow there so I'm going to do this one next and what is Gav going to do with it uh, I believe I'm going to be painting it uh, sky grey so let's actually get that down so you can see it as I do like you to see the colours I'm using there we go sky grey for the base uh, and then we'll 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 uh, I'll get into it from there 
Right guys, we've uh, got the cover uh, complete. <laughs> Archie's being very vocal today, again. <laughs> Thank you, Archie. 10 years old, do you think you know better? Right, let's get back to it, Gav. Uh, so we've got our uh, sky grey as our base, and I've just used, uh, let me see, what have we got? Off-white from AK. That's quite a nice one. Uh, it's got a, a fair bit of contrast there, but we will be, let's get it a bit closer, we'll be putting some blue stripes on that, so I don't, I won't go into another highlight. What I normally do is put the stripes on and then very carefully uh, try and, you know, if there is another highlight of white that needs to be done, then I'll add it in there afterwards. But uh, I don't go to town and I leave a fairly stark contrast, uh, you know, just because of the stripes will be taking a lot of that up. So let's get on to the stripes. All right, guys, we've uh, got the stripes on the cover. Uh, just the two colours of blue uh, I've got it from. Let me get my, as you all know by now, the blue set. Oh, let's give out Gav in case anybody doesn't. There we go. And I've used, what have you used, Gav? I've used that one and I've used that one. Now, let's get back in again. I just want to show you something. Uh, obviously, these are draws. Let's point again. Draw skin, uh, draw, draw string bags, at either side or either end, I should say. Uh, so what I tend to do is start off on that end. Well, there we go. Uh, start off on the end before I start going along. You don't have to. If you're not confident about draw, painting on, you know, lines and stripes on on uh, clothing. Uh, even when you, be, I mean, I've been doing it a fair while on different Napoleonics and other other things. You still stuff up. You still have to. There was a tiny bit where I'd actually put a, a highlight of blue on and went too far over and had to put a dab of well, grey or, or white paint on to to clean it up slightly. But what I was going to say is, this is being pulled in. You know, either end. It's been. You know, you're not going to, in, in reality, it's not going to be a set stripe straight across. You know, there's going to be some movement that, that and, and movement of the stripes up and down and, and pushed in other areas because you've got obviously your strapping that's going to go over that when we get round to painting it. Uh, so don't put, get yourself put off. Uh, little things like that are actually quite handy to, to learn the, the way of doing it. Well, <laughs> not a lot of learning involved, you know. It's, make the stripe you tend to find when people aren't confident they make the stripes as wide as possible and as few as possible and they they tend not to then look stripey if that makes sense you know you see them on trousers where they've maybe got two or three blue line stripes down and i'm not saying that again nobody can throw stones at you really uh, can anybody really say that maybe you know there wasn't a hell of a lot wider stripes on things and than you know material that was made in some local factory somewhere and somebody was wearing it or putting it on their part of their uniform so if you want to go down that road obviously feel free i just think that if you can get into the habit of taking the taking the more complicated stuff head on uh, you will get better with it um, these stripes, as I say, they don't have to be massively uh, straight. I mean, you try and make them as straight as you can, but if you deviate slightly, uh, it's it, to me, it's not a massive problem. I mean, they're being pulled in by the straps, and you know, you're going to have some deviation of, of of where the material's stretched and not. But if you start at one one end, whichever you know you feel comfortable at being right-handed, I tend to start from the right-hand side. Uh, make your first stripe up and just slightly round then you'll get you'll get the idea of where you want to go with it and then you know you dress it in at the other end um, but it's not particularly hard uh, and you can go hide up more highlights less highlights uh, you know whatever you like uh, it look a bit better once the strapping's painted over it as well but we've we've got a uh, that'll be in a separate uh, video um, but we'll get round to that in the next uh, the next couple of videos so that's all that we want to do on the backpack. As I say, it's a shame we can't. I, I could do the stripes over the, the, all the different, you know, uh, 
tapes and that and you could say well that's that bit finished gav i mean that's how it's if you paint like that that's fine uh, but i tend to prefer putting my paint in my palette of a particular color and then i will go over everything uh, you know as uh, as i go all in one in one hit everything that needs to be covered uh, by that particular paint so what we're going to do next is our musket uh, this will have all metal fittings rather than the brass you know the brass fittings it's like some of the guard units had in that or some of the the muskets that they might have used that taken off off other nations uh, so it'll all be white metal uh, I tend to prefer to do the white put them it's going to be metallic uh, as in metallic paint and it'll just be Vallejo's gun metal the old favorite uh, we'll put that down uh, I prefer doing metallic the metallic barrel and the the bayonet before I do uh, the the woodwork uh, and that way you're not putting your metallic paint over over the the, the woodwork it tends to be a bit more cleaner uh, and metallics are always a bit more harder to clean up uh, with paint than, than uh, you know painting over uh, than the, than the non uh, normal paint if that makes sense so yeah so let's get the uh, we're going to be Vallejo gunmetal down on this and uh, we'll take it from there the only thing I won't be doing again is the is the strap or the sling as we call it all right guys as you can see I've done the musket uh, what I used was uh, we, there we go um, metallic grey for the uh, or gunmetal grey I should say for the all the metal, white metal parts. I so say I put those down first. Uh, I then infill uh, with some chocolate brown. It's quite a dark, dark brown. I then put a very watery wash of shadow flesh from AK, and that was all in these areas here. Oh, where are we here? And then the old favourite again of Gav's. Uh, again, some watered down. Oh, I had all this on the palette anyway. Where are we, Gav? Come on, get in there. Amaranth red. Uh, don't put it on too heavy uh, because you will get a really orangey look, but if that might be what you're looking for. So that was just putting in places to, uh, it was, I put it on a bit heavy, it was a bit too red. Uh, I then went back over uh, with some black brown and uh, obviously as you can see here put in the around the, the banding on the musket, uh, around the butt plate, uh, around uh, the trigger a bit, uh, put a bit on the end, uh, pure black on the end there just to represent the hole in the barrel. Uh, it'll look a bit better when the when the sling's on it and it might need a, tart, a tartan up here and there. It's quite a thin in scale musket. Uh, so trying to find the woodwork where the barrel is and where the woodwork is uh, can take a bit of time. So uh, I'll have a look at that. You know, when again, when I do all the whole figure, I then go over every bit again, just having a look at it, just you know, with a Mark One eyeball, and just uh, checking what I like and what I don't like, and changing bits that might need changing. So yeah, that's our guide done for this video. Uh, thank you very much for stopping by and taking a look. Uh, uh, with the with the white metal here, you could put a you know some type of wash over it if you wanted to darken it down in places, and then put maybe a more silvery one. Um, I don't like the bayonets to be too silvery. Uh, quite a lot of the times they're quite you know dull metal, uh, so uh, I, I tend to do them all in one and then just do the demarcation lines on them, and that, that's good enough for me. Uh, but. Uh, yeah, it'll look a bit better. It looks a bit messy without without the sling being done, but uh, you can put a uh, wood grain on. Uh, in that case, you'd find uh, a lighter brown uh, and do whatever wood grain effects you want to do, uh, and then put the lighter paint, you know, a, a thin down paint over the top, uh, rather than than say putting the putting the wood grain effect straight on. I, I prefer not to do it. I've done it occasionally, but uh, I think it looks a bit out of scale, really. Uh, for pers just personal choice. So, uh, and also the musket, yeah, it might be a bit too ready for some people, but I, I, I quite like that rather than just a, you know, just rather than having chocolate 
chocolate brown with some form of brown highlights. I prefer doing some things like that, putting a bit of orange in. Uh, a bit of yellow as well, what have we got here for it? You could put yellow brown or you could use, well that's actually natural wood grain it says there, so uh, yeah, you know, a bit of that. Not for wood grain, but just to, to highlight on top of that orange if you really wanted to, but um, at the moment I'm happy with that. So. Thanks again for stopping with this one. It's all taking time, as I say, you know, not much we can do about it. As I say, I'd, I don't know much about all this editing lark, uh, and this is the only way I can think of, 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 you know, not making something hours and hours long. So, uh, so this is why you're not seeing me paint on camera at the moment. I don't really, I can't see how that's, uh, it's just another way of trying to knock back the time on these videos. So look after yourselves. Uh, keep dodging that blooming virus that's hitting us again. Uh, if you're being locked down, if you're feeling low, uh, pick up your paintbrush, get a figure on the go. Uh, if you're a scale modeler, obviously do your thing uh, and just put on videos like these that are you know like-minded people. Uh, don't just don't just sit there and get get feel worse and worse. Uh, you know it's too easy to go down that road. So look after yourselves. Uh, you know you're not on your own just keep just keep picking up a brush if because you're here because you like figure painting pick that figure up do a bit of brush work uh, put some videos on of like-minded people uh, there's other people out there uh, and just just keep your chins up until uh, this wave passes so look after yourselves uh, I'll say Merry Christmas but uh, there's probably be more videos coming up so so look after yourselves and we'll see each other soon on another video